Hi, my name is John Fraze, I'm Senior Managing Director at Anchor, and I'm the head of the Global Labor Strategy Division. I'm here with Tom Sherman, who is the, uh, what are you, Chief Transformation Officer at Servicon. I will say that both, both of our opinions are our own. We're not going to be held responsible for anything we say. Uh, but <laughs> but we, we have been in this series for a long time, and Dave Gilbertson is not with us today. and He's been really the anchor of all of these, but we're excited to, to do another one um, and to talk about the labor shortage. And the labor shortage is, is a topic that's not going away, and the topic's not going away because the shortage isn't going away. And so if that's the case, what are we going to do about it? And I know, Tom, you've got a lot of opinions. I've got a lot of opinions. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do and, and how you see this topic? Yeah, um, Chief Transformation Officer, our company's in the, in the janitorial and disinfection business. So we're, we operate in hospitals and aerospace companies. So it's a services business and it's work that um, in a lot of cases is complex and difficult, like cleaning clean rooms or operating theaters, but much of it is basic rudimentary cleaning, toilets, common areas, carpets. Um, it's work that people don't love doing. And so as- So you must be destroyed during the pandemic and you're gonna tell me I'm wrong. I'm going to tell you wrong. No, we were, of course we struggled. Um, Everybody during, struggled. During the pandemic, demand increased and we had to hire like crazy. Um, and we grew about 14% in, in, in 2020 alone. We have, uh, the company was about, I want to say 1,400 when we started the year. We were over 1,600 at the end of the year. Wow. And that, and that doesn't account for all the turnover as well. So we, we probably hired about 400 people um, in the course of that year. Most of them in this, in this range of, say, entry-level workers. So as, as companies are grappling with this topic and struggling, and frankly, we know people in your sector that are in the middle of filing bankruptcy. There are companies failing, and they're failing not because the business model on the surface doesn't work, they're failing because they cannot hire and retain talent, period. Right. Now, we've talked in other videos about how companies are cutting orders or doing less, mm -hmm. but when the margins are tight and the prospect of cleaning toilets or doing other janitorial services is the name of the game, yeah, I don't understand how you are standing out differently from a lot of the other companies that are either failing or suffering during this process. Right, it's, it, for us it's, uh, I think, twofold, two things stand out. Number one, we consider ourselves a people company that cleans. It's something our, our clients actually say about us. It's something our people say about us. So when, when we treat people like people, we give them a good, safe environment, both physically and psychologically, um, a place where they can grow and develop careers. Because we've had people who started out as housekeepers, as, as a day porter, right? take care of the refreshing the towels in the restroom. We see these folks, you know, when we right. go to the movie theater or not. Um, from there to directors of sectors running, you know, a, a huge staff of like three or 400 people. So we, we provide those paths. So, so we treat people like people and, and provide opportunity, but we also control our turnover, again, for the same reason, by treating people like people and giving them opportunity. Um, we have some of the lowest turnover in our industry. Our industry is normally two, 300% turnover and we're yeah. down in the, in the mid 30s. It's that the call centers are at like 150 percent. It's brutal so work. Feel, yeah, it's, it's brutal all, work. It's all brutal work, and you're down in the what? 30s, mid 30s. Which is fantastic. Yes. So yes, what's very, interesting very, to me very, though very is possible. there's, and I know something about your company, and you and I have known each other for a little while. There's a lot of companies trying to solve this problem, and they're bringing in, you know, a 25-step program with, you know, a big lift around lots of different activities, and I think you've been telling me. There's a lot of work, but it's not that complicated. It's a lot of work, but not that complicated. So it's, yeah, I've been, I've been, I've been coaching and developing leaders for, for many years now. I hate to admit it. <laughs> just, <laughs> like, I just feel, as I'm saying, I'm like, so will you take me in? So please, please take as, me in. As we're recording this, I'm turning 50 a week from today. Wow. Um, and that's, so, that's old, by the way. So that's, <laughs> you just lost half the audience. Oh, I'm 47. <laughs> I'm almost there, man. So it's, yeah, so I have a lot of years. So in, in, in developing leaders, it always comes back to fundamentals, right? It's, it's you know, if you, if you read Harvard Business Review or you re see any of the basics um, that are published out there, most of the leadership memes that you might follow on LinkedIn and whatnot, yeah. right? These, these guys, it, it's, it's always the basics. Recognize people for the work that they're doing. Don't just go and say, hey, good job, buddy. But go in and say, hey, I really appreciate the work that you did in this carpet, especially this corner. The customer saw that there was a huge stain there. It was gone the next day. That's great work, thank you. So gratitude, but thoughtful gratitude. It's not enough to say thank you, because if you're saying thank you, it could be an empty thank you. It's thank you because specifically, here's what you did to make an impact. Exactly. So you have to be it, it's, it thoughtful. It needs to be timely, specific, um, and proportional. 
right? You don't want to you don't want to hand somebody a trophy for doing their job the night before, or showing up on time for a week. Right. If they showed up on time for five years, okay, maybe a trophy is worthy. Right. We, we need to be thoughtful about that. But that's so we don't need a crazy program. thing though. We don't need a crazy program. Acknowledgement is powerful, and and if you when folks talk about engagement, um, our supervisor taking a genuine interest in our work is one of the number one leading indicators of engagement. Fantastic. And it's very easy to take an interest in someone's work, just ask them a question. So I went to visit a job site. Um, I can't mention the name of the company because we're recording this, <laughs> but they make rockets and stuff to go to space. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they have a certain X factor. Yeah. So the, uh, but we, my, my colleague and I went with the housekeeper and followed her through, they have on-site medical clinics, and we, and we followed her through the clinic and, and, and asked genuine questions, like, well, how, how do you do this? And we worked alongside of her and asked for instructions because my colleague, I don't, I don't come from cleaning background, I'm a software engineer by trade. Right. <laughs> and here I am at this company helping them with IT and, and right. leadership development and stuff, it's fun. Um, so I have no idea how to clean, so I'm asking lots of questions. How do you clean this? How do you then disinfect it? We disinfect it, how do we time things accordingly so that it is done properly and that it's safe for the people to come in and use the facility later? And uh, two years later, this person is still talking to all of her colleagues about that visit because we took that interest. And she is gonna work for us for as long as she possibly can because she loved just, just from holding on to that moment that we were there with her and just asking these questions and, and learning from her and then providing feedback and recognizing opportunities to make it a little bit better. And we did, we went away and we came back and we made things better for her. Yeah, but it's, the, the problem is that we don't take the time. So the, the, the concept time. isn't complicated, but we have to stop you know, the 50 corporate meetings we have every day and carve out time to do these things. And people generally, generally are not taking the time to do that. They're not carving out time to do this. And what I've learned really in the last couple of months, even though we've had the data all along, is that companies that are failing at communicating and engaging their workforce, they tell us over and over again, we have town halls once a week and we do shift meetings and we have digital boards that have messaging yeah. all the time. <laughs> they it's, talk it's like an old Dilbert cartoon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's like we're going to continue to hold meetings to find out why people aren't getting their work done. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's what's but, but they never ask the employees questions. And so great communication is directly correlated to asking questions. And it's yes. what you did. You went out to first, you took the time and carved it out, right? You didn't have to read seven or eight books on this, although you read books all the time. And I make money for that a little it's bit. My, you should. But yes. it's, it's, yeah, it's my thing. I'm a nerd. But, I'm but, a but, you, do, but you don't need to, if, if you listen to these simple steps, simple. carve out time ask questions, listen, and then follow through. This is no different than dating, it's no different than sales. When you show where up- Where were you when I was 16? Wh where was I when I was 16? <laughs> <laughs> Sitting in the corner wondering why I can't ask that girl out. <laughs> no, it, it comes down to genuine, authentic curiosity, right? And, and taking an interest in someone and asking questions and get the other person talking and listen to what they have to say. And don't just wait, don't, don't try to think of the next thing you're gonna ask or the next thing you're gonna say. Let it flow, kind of like this conversation, right? Just yeah. let it flow. And that, you know, on a, on a date, you can get your date more interested in you just by asking questions and letting your date talk. Yes, I like, like that. Going five months now with the one I'm dating. Congratulations. Yes, I employed this tactic, but she's better at it. Yeah. <laughs> it became a battle. She's, she's, she's like, it's like Socrates so it's fighting <laughs> Socrates. <laughs> yes, it's like, what are you talking about? Yeah. But in sales, we, we do, um, it's consultative selling. It's going in and asking questions and building a relationship and getting to know someone and learning about them and their environment learning about the people they're working with so that you can figure out how to solve their problem. And, and that's kind of maybe the underlying thing for those that want to be concrete problem solvers. You can't solve a problem unless you understand what is the root cause of that problem. And the only way you understand that is to ask questions or use the five why, W-H-Y, yes. five whys. Well, why is that happening? Well, why is that happening? Well, why is that? And eventually you yeah, get to what get is that. really the root cause. But many of us in leadership have given up on things like saying thank you because we don't think it moves the needle. We say, there's, it's got to be something bigger in this complex world. It can't just be someone does something that makes an impact and I recognize them for that. Would that really make them feel better? And I keep telling them, yes, you, if you actually recognize real impact. So, and thank you is powerful, right? So, um, it makes people uncomfortable, by the way. Yeah. They say, they, yeah. they love it, but they're also nervous. So, so we're, we're, we're here at this conference recording this, and, and there are staff. We're in Las Vegas, by the way. They wouldn't let us have the wedding chapel. I was disappointed. They locked, they locked the door. <laughs> they locked the door. He said, think, not this guy again. I, I think it would have been great to sit in the wedding chapel with you. Um, <laughs> the, the, the staff, the, tons of staff working, working this, right? They're, they're uh, be, because we're, we're still kind of
coming out of this pandemic, they have staff who are plating our food That's right. and moving it behind a barrier until we get to the end and then they hand us our food and we walk away with it, um, which is great because we can't do the buffet thing. But stopping, making eye contact with someone and saying, thank you, I appreciate you doing this for me. Like just that pause, the folks that have, that have helped me, like they step back a little bit. Like, they like, do. What, why, what? Like how? They glow. Yeah, and they're, they they're, they're like, concerned. You just took it. Yeah, <laughs> first they're like, did I do something wrong? <laughs> yeah, and then they say, wait a minute, and it's, it's exactly what you're saying. It's disarming. It's authentic. And it's authentic because they're doing something to be truly helpful. Yeah. So I, I think that's, when we talk about levers, I go into labor strategy, shift schedules, work and pay policies, all this other stuff. Those things are important. There are simpler things that you can do every day. Yes, but let's, let's not kid ourselves. It's a complicated issue, multifaceted. Like it takes there. a lot of work. It takes a lot of work. You can't just increase pay. You can't just go around and say, thank you, I appreciate the work. Because some people will walk away and say, well, you fucking appreciated it. You pay me like That's a dollar exactly more right. like the guy across the street. Uh, it's, it, it, it's a... Um, These are currencies. Yeah. So you can't just, if you just pay in one currency, they obsess about that currency and you'll never pay them enough. Well, right? who, who has ever paid enough? I no mean, whatever raise we've gotten, we've never been happy. We've always said thank you and been satisfied. Yeah. Sometimes we're happy. For a couple but weeks. But I guarantee a year later. <laughs> yeah. A couple like, weeks later. You're like, where's my 3% or yeah, whatever? Yeah, you forgot, you've already <laughs> forgotten about the last yeah. one. That one's already, you know, done. So I, I think that you've brought up some really important points. The, the one thing I'd ask is, are there other sort of tips and tricks like that you've learned from your employees? What do they respond to in your world? Because again, I think you've got the toughest job or one of the toughest jobs because of the work that your people do. So I mentioned safety, right? Obviously physical safety is important because we work with chemicals and we have slippery floors and we have yep. to deal with that and that's important. But it's the psychological safety I mentioned. So someone knowing that if they happen to show up late to work one time, they're not gonna get chewed out. But we're actually gonna sit and ask them, it's like, hey John, you, you showed up late the last couple of days, but you're never late. Like, what's going on? Can I help? So Take, taking yeah. a genuine interest, again, human, treating a human like a human. But an environment where they can make mistakes and they're not gonna get in trouble for that, but we can use that to learn and, and help grow from. Sometimes mistakes are bad, right? But our leaders are taught, we literally have a leadership value, maintain composure even in tough situations. And we're all human, like I lost it last week with my executive team, it was just like, <laughs> like guys, you didn't do the homework on the KPIs right. and what you're presenting to me is like, oh, and I'm just like, oh, I'm frustrated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it happens. But when we, when we have that environment and that's our goal, and that's our intention, and we continue with that, people respond really well. Then they, be, they feel safe to dissent. And I always encourage my, my team to dissent. Like I wanna know if I'm doing something wrong, I don't care if I'm sitting with the owner of the company, I want you to call me out, because yeah. I want the truth and, and work with that. I want people to tell it saves me. Saves a lot of time. It saves a lot of time, but if someone realizes, look, it's harder for me to do this particular route, like a route for cleaning is how you move around a, a facility in the most optimal way. If you can save minutes off of each person times you know, a thousand people, that, it matters. that saves real dollars. And they, they, then they'll have the courage, they'll feel safe to say, hey, if I ran this route a little differently, I think I can clean this faster. But they're not gonna say that to a boss who's not open and creating that safe space for them to do it. Sure. So it means, it means showing up, and, and that genuine interest is kind of one of those levers in there uh, to pull, but creating that safe space. And for up and coming leaders, letting them make decisions, understanding that if they do mess it up, they're not gonna mess it up so bad that we can't fix it, right? But you're, like, I'm asking you about how to make the employee culture better, and you're telling me that by making the employee culture better, we actually run a better business. Because they're exactly. getting better routes. If we actually yeah. listen to the people that do the work, yeah. we can actually run a more effective Yeah, Colin, Colin Powell, the, the late Colin Powell. Um, Isn't that amazing? He's, he's gone. It is, it is. He, he said something along the lines of, uh, the leader in the field is always right, unless proven otherwise. Yeah, that's so like you, The default is not what's happening behind the line. Like The generals have no idea what's going on. Yeah. Like you, so don't trust us. Trust the, the leader the leader in the field, or, or the, the man on the ground, the woman on the ground. Uh, they'll, they have the answers. And this is, this is true in any line of work, not just services. I, I knew it good coming up as a software engineer. I, I knew, of course, I was, you know, we're all cocky as software engineers. Um, we know the better way to run things, right? Yeah. And, and oftentimes we do. And if, if folks listen and then collaborate on, well, what you're saying isn't exactly the answer, but you know what? There's actually something nearby that might be a better way. And now we're working together to solve problems. That's right. That's right. So. It, for years, and I know that you know the best places to work and the top 100 fortune companies and all this stuff, yep. those numbers have changed over time as more companies have gotten involved in it. What's been interesting to me is historically, if we go back 10, 15 years, the companies that were always in the top of that list, the Jam Smuckers and the Pella Corporation, they were not fancy companies. 
their leadership strategy was just what you're talking about, especially places like Pella where you know, they treated everybody like family and they listened to their employees. And same with J.M. Smucker out of Orville, Ohio. You know, it's grassroots family owned, you got a problem. One of the Smucker kids that now run the company is getting on the plane and they're flying to that factory to talk to you. So they get on the plane, they go. The plant management teams don't always love it because they're like, listen, People can't go to the gym in the factory and work out during their shift. We need them to run the line. <laughs> so like, please fly home. <laughs> but, but listen, the genuine concern I think matters, and I think in many ways by getting into a fancy set of systems and you know, a lot of flowery stuff, we've missed the block and tackle basics. And what you're telling me at Servicon and really what you believe is the block and tackle basics are the things that actually move the needle. They still matter. They, they do. They, I mean, at, at the end of the day, and, and look, I'm a technologist, and we implement technology to make our operations more efficient, and we should. That's a good thing to do. But we have to remember that humans are we're, we're humans in a human world, running businesses ultimately staffed by humans. Yep. We have to treat them like humans. Uh, I'm going to say humans as many times as I can. <laughs> exactly, you're winning for sure. <laughs> like, no, that's really good. And so, you know, we, we have gotten in trouble in the past, Dave Gilbertson and I have, for mm -hmm. saying, like, thanks for telling us the world's ending but not giving us any of the solutions. Yeah. So we came back and we gave them some solutions. Well, it's not ending, but it's certainly changing to the point where our, 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 we, we all feel like our survival is at stake. And this yeah. is an important psychological component. I, I read a lot of psychology today. You know, my newsfeed is just filled with stuff to like bring back and, and, and try out and bring wisdom to folks. But the, the survival mechanism gets kicked in when we feel like the world is out of control or, or we have no control of our world and, and it's, it's hard to deal with. So that safe environment I talked about, um, we don't want someone to feel like their survival would be at stake if they came to ask their boss a question or if they wanted to provide some idea. Um, similarly, the, um, we, we are in a place where the labor shortage is not going to get better. People are, and it's, it's, it's going to continue to get better. And I started with that without saying anything afterwards, so I'm glad that you're yeah. bringing this I know, back. Yeah, no, I want to come back to that because it's, it's, people say, well, what do you mean it's never going to get better? Well, the reality is there are new and better jobs getting created all along the spectrum of like the highest end thinking workers, like the scientists and the yep. geniuses that are creating things all the way down to the, to the entry level folks. And what's happening is it's creating a vacuum where everybody's sort of stepping up into the next role. The way it was described to me, um, this gentleman said, the, the college professor becomes a scientist that open, creates an opening in college. The high school professor then becomes a college professor and then somebody has to step into that high school role and they need to be trained on how to do that. And it's probably me and my 13 year old son who's not perfect at science, but they'll give it a shot. <laughs> right, but they'll give it a shot. Hey, Somebody's got to do it. Right. Out, right? right. So we, we have to learn not to lower our standards, but lower the barrier to entry and then create other systems for training and developing and grooming people and treating them well so that they can stay with it and learn how to do a great job or changing the job in such a way that folks who have less experience can do a portion of it. Like our recruiting team, we have initial interviewers kind of scanning through uh, initial resumes that we get from or, or applications that we get from workers, taking that work away from recruiters, yeah. we have like two, and then they're doing all the work to make sure that people actually get hired. So Dave Gilbertson called the return to work. He said, listen, we're gonna, we're gonna have a better jobs number September, maybe October because of back to school, not because of um, government checks, and he actually has a science to prove that federal pandemic checks did not drive right. this, any of the return to work. So that's one. September is a little off only because it took people a couple of weeks to get the job after they got their kids back in school, but sure. he called it, he said, listen, back to school is gonna drive labor participation up, and okay. it did. Okay. Those numbers showed up in October, 513,000 jobs. Okay. What's okay. interesting though is it doesn't matter. I mean, it matters that he called that, it matters for private equity firms that are like, we gotta invest right. based on this information, and David Gilbertson holds the keys, and you know, <laughs> he gets, you know, people send him cases of wine secretly in the dark of night and say, what's right. next? He's got that kind of information. But what's interesting is they come back and people say, wait, things are gonna get better. The war for talent's not going away. This yeah. is not changing. So I don't care More if jobs we, are getting created. Yeah. You know, somebody creates 100,000 jobs, some big company creates 100,000 jobs, they come from somewhere. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> there just aren't that many people. And by the way, the great employees already have a job or they're entering the workforce and they've got a lot of options. Right. So, and I wanna end with this. That Everything you talked about <clears throat> does not require hiring outside consultants. It doesn't require reading 15 books, although you think people should do it anyway because it's important. I think you should read and study your craft. Your craft. So what it does require is taking a step back and simplifying and saying, 
there are basic human needs that we can provide to our people. We're just not doing it. So let's be honest about it. Let's go through a checklist of currencies we can pay, which is like merit-based promotions and time off and cash and benefits and all that stuff, but it's other things too. Right. And so really understanding that list of currencies and, and, and taking us all back to basics, thank you, but I like that we, you said, because I, I said, like it's, why don't we say thank you anymore with one of our other videos? You're saying you have to do it intelligently. You can't just say thank you and walk away. Right. So no, why don't you end a, us on that? Take human, us home with human, that. A human connection has to be made. Um, and, and I did want to mention the next time we'll talk about how to, how to schedule your time and balance your time so that you can have the space to be able to go interact with people. Because as you invest in that, it starts to happen. Yeah, you have to fire some we'll do, of those we'll do that, meetings. We'll do that, yeah, we'll do that in a future session. Um, but no, I, I like thank you for, for bringing me on here and, and talking about this. It's been engaging. And for those who are watching, thank you for participating. No, it's, it, I really appreciate it. I like the idea that we have to do more. We can't just say thank you. We have to say thank you for doing this very specific yeah. thing. And make and an eye contact. Make a human connection. Make yes. a human connection and say thank you. So to our cameraman in the back, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And thanks to Dave Gilbertson for helping to found this series. And uh, we appreciate everybody coming out to watch.